Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a follow-up to the video I did the other day where I showed how to create hem, uh, info, grommet marks, and page borders for banners in Adobe InDesign. Today is going to be a little bit more of an automation setup. If you haven't seen the previous video, you will need to watch it. I'll leave a link down in the description below or you can click up above and watch the previous video first if you haven't seen it already. So in front of me I have a couple different folders. This has the original banner files. This one here already has the bleed set up and I used the same pre-flight that I did in the previous video to set the, ban or the uh, bleed up on all of these uh, seven banner designs. As you can also see there are different sizes. The reason I put a leading zero in front of these ones here is because when we go to place these images or these PDFs into our uh, InDesign file, it automatically looks for the highest number or the, the most number first. I don't, it's a little glitch with InDesign for whatever reason. It would, it would treat 120 before 96 or before 72 for some reason. So I just add the leading zero to make it a little bit more efficient. Now up above here I have my banner template INDT which stands for InDesign template file. The reason you're going to want to use a template file is because you're not going to want to overwrite your original. Um, if I open a template file, if you're not really familiar with how that works with InDesign, I open that file up and instead of being labeled as banner template it just comes in as a untitled document. If I go to save this I can overwrite the original template file, but I have to change the format from a document to a template. And the whole point of doing it this way is so that um, if you are using this for automation, you want to be able to just open your template, drop in your PDFs, and then export, and you're not going to need to save it. So you don't really want to accidentally overwrite the original template file unless you are making changes to the uh, page layout and I'll talk about that in a few minutes so first things first I'm going to show you the structure of the file they there are three layers if I look at my layers uh, palette here I have the banner file the grommets and the hem area with the variable text that we created you have to have them in this uh, arrangement because the banner itself has to be the on the bottom uh, if it was on the top it would automatically uh, be placed on top of the grommet information and the hem information so when you export it those items wouldn't be shown so you need to make sure your banner file is on the bottom if I zoom in here you can see this big giant X and this is a graphic frame that's why it has the X there if you're unfamiliar with InDesign if I right click here where it says content you can see it's assigned as a graphic frame and the reason I want it set to a graphic frame is because when I go to place my PDF, I'm just going to have to click anywhere in this frame and it'll automatically place it dead center. So I don't even have to be precise with my placement. Uh, the only thing you need to make sure is when you right click here, go to fitting, frame fitting options, just make sure it's fitting is none. Um, because we already set the size of our PDFs here so everything is going to be falling dead center into our frame here in InDesign. Obviously in the previous video I talked about adding a border to the outside of this. You can see the border is still there and our frame with our grommets are already set up using our stroke styles that we set in the previous video and then down here we have our variable text information that's already set up as well. If I zoom in here, you can see at the moment it says no intersecting link and that basically is telling me that that information is blank because there's no PDF that's been placed into this um, onto this pasteboard. So if I zoom all the way back out, you can see I have four different sizes, four different banner sizes, and those were created using alternate layouts in InDesign. If you're unfamiliar with that, it allows you to take information that you set up on one page and basically change the size of the page um, to a different size and have a what they call alternate layout for your um, for your pasteboard so if I go to my pages I'm going to create that because right now 
I have one for a 2x5 banner, a 3x10, 4x6, and 4x8. And as you can see here, the last one we need to create is for a 4x10. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click the little hamburger menu and I'm going to go to create alternate layout. And here I'm going to name this as 4x10. I'm going to choose a source. It doesn't really matter what source you choose as long as it's one of the already existing sources. In this case, I'll just do a 4x8 because it's the same height dimension. And then we're going to change the width to 120 and the height to 48. That's 10 foot wide by four feet tall. None of this information really applies to us in this case because we're just using it as a placeholder more than anything. We don't have already linked stories or uh, text that we need to reflow or anything like that. So just for this, um, for this type of setup, you can just ignore it. So I'll click OK. And you can see here, if I go all the way to the right, I've created a 4 by 10. If you want to re rename this to something else that allows you to remember it easier, you can certainly just click here and change it. I'm just leaving it set to the size of the banner so I know which one is which. Um, you can also see here all of these have this little slash mark through the eye. Uh, if you're not using a current version of Adobe InDesign, you're going to have to download the newest version in order to use this feature. But if I right click on a page and I go to show spread, now you can see the little mark disappears. If I right click again and go hide spread, the icon shows up. And essentially what this does is it hides the page from output. So right now, since I have all five of these pages set with the little eye mark here, they're all hidden. And when I go to export this document, or print this document, it has nothing to print and export because everything is hidden. If I want to show, or uh, if I want to print one specific page, let's say I wanted to print just my design that was on my two by five foot page, I just right click and hit show spread. Now when I export, it'll export this page, but it will not export any of the other pages in the document because those are hidden. But for now, we're just gonna leave it as uh, hidden. So anyway, if I go back to my 4x10 layout, we do have to make a couple little changes here. And as you can see here, this information was copied from the layout above. So our width or height is the same, but our width is different. So we need to change where our boxes are here. Uh, fortunately, the, the hem information falls in the same place, so we don't have to make any changes there. But if it was a different size, let's say if it was placed like down here, uh, or right in the middle or whatever, you can just drag it down to the bottom so that it goes into the bleed area down here, which is our hem area on our banner. So I'm gonna right click on my bounding box here, my frame for my uh, actual artwork. And I'm going to drag that, whoops, excuse me. I'm gonna drag that all the way out to the edges of the bleed, which is the red outline here at the edge. And then I'm going to click on my grommet mark and I'm going to drag that all the way to my page border which is the pink line and as you can see here as I did that it added an additional grommet mark here based on the stroke style that we set up in the previous video so now everything is basically set up and ready to go I add in my information for my fifth banner size if you have more banner sizes you can just do it just like I did before where you go up to the uh, create alternate layout. And let's say you're doing a six by 10, you can add that information in there or whatever size that you, you need to and just keep adding them as you go. So if you wanna start off with just these five with your file, that's fine and then just add them as you go along. Just make sure that you are saving over your template file every time you add a new page and then when you're ready to place everything, you go ahead and you close this out before doing so, and which is what I'm going to do right now. So real quick, I'm just gonna hit save. So I already did that, and then now I'm going to close this. I'm gonna go back into my finder window here, and I'm gonna reopen that banner uh, template file. And you can see when I do that now, it's an untitled document, because that way we won't accidentally overwrite the template file it's especially important once we place our designs in the document here 
we don't want to save that because then every time you would have to delete those designs and redo all of these steps. So it's always better to start basically from an empty file, so to speak. So if I go back to my finder here, you can see I have two 24 by 60s and I have two 48 by 120s. So I need to add additional pages here to those two layouts. So I'm going to start over here at my 2x5. And if I click here, make sure I'm on that page. If I go down here and create new page, it's going to give me a blank, um, an additional blank doc or document size or page in that same size. However, the problem is it won't copy over any of this information like the box and your grommet and everything else it'll just basically create a blank page for you which is what you don't want so I'm gonna delete that and instead what I'm gonna do is right click and go to duplicate spread now what it'll do is it'll copy all of the information that we had set up from this page to the new page and again since our text is variable down at the bottom you don't have to worry about changing anything you can just go ahead and just add additional pages as you need them let's say you had 10 of these you would just duplicate this 10 times and then you would have 10 pages for uh, 2 by 5 banners. So since I have an additional one for my 4 by 10 I'm going to click over here, do the same thing, duplicate spread, and now I have two pages set up here, two pages set up here, and then one, pages, one page for all the other pages, all the other sizes, excuse me, in my uh, InDesign document. So now I'm ready to place my images in here, my PDFs, so I'm, before I do that, I'm going to go up to my layers palette and I'm going to lock my hem and my grommet layers. That way I know I'm just on my banner file um, uh, layer and that's where we're going to place it into these uh, frames that we set up. So I go up to file, place, navigate to my folder that I have all my bleed files here. And if you want to, you can check the show, op show import options. Basically, that just allows you to set whether you're applying it or the uh, InDesign is going to use the media or the bleed setting. Uh, for this case, you're going to want to set everything to media anyway, and that's what I had done previously. So I'm just going to click open, and it's going to load up all of those seven files into a cursor for me. It may take just a minute because these are banner files, so they might be kind of big. So now you can see it gives a little preview of the page that you're currently working on. And you can see there's a seven there that shows up that shows there's seven total images, or in this case, PDFs that are, be, are ready to be placed into your InDesign document. So now, since I have my information already set up with my frame, I can just click anywhere in here and it'll automatically place it into my design. And I already have everything loaded up in order. So I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And as you can see, it placed it right in the center position, stretched ever all the way to the edge. And since we placed it in the banner file uh, layer, all the grommets and everything are still exactly where we need it. So if I zoom in here, you can see here, our grommet info is still here. Our page information that goes down the hem area is still here the only thing that you need to look out for is a situation like this here on this uh, banner where you have a dark background and since we had our grommets set to a black color you may want to change that to white so if I just come in here and I uncheck these two I'm gonna click on my uh, grommet and I'm gonna change this color from black to paper or white in this case and then I'm also going to highlight my uh, hem area text here. I'm going to click the little format affecting text and then I'm going to change that text color to paper as well. That way if I zoom in here you can see it's a little bit easier to read. And now if you also notice since we placed this in that placeholder text that said uh, you know no no file found or whatever it was now shows the exact information that comes from this PDF file. So now we're ready to export. The question is, which one do you need? In this case, if we need all seven, we can just shift click from start to finish, right click and go show spreads. 
and now it'll export all seven of these designs. Let's say we just want the two by fives. Uh, let me undo that real quick. And I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna highlight the two two by five banners. I'll right click and hit show spreads. And now I'll go ahead and go to file export. And I'll just call this test. Choose whatever preset you want. You just need to make sure under the marks and bleeds that you have your used document bleed settings checked and then hit export. May take just a minute because these are banner files. If you're ever wondering what's going on, you can click on the background tasks and this will show you what's going on uh, currently just to make sure your program didn't freeze. So anyway, you can see here there's two pages now in this PDF and it's just the first two designs. It ignored the other designs in this or the other pages in this InDesign file because we had it set to uh, hidden here. So if I go back again to my PDF, there's my information that has all of my variable text set up with the PDF file info as well as the time that this file was exported. And you can see here the where the one is and the two, that information is changing for each page of the PDF based on what the name here of the PDF that we dropped into InDesign. So now these are ready to go. You can go ahead and send this off to your printer. And then when you're finished, when you come back to your um, InDesign file, let me just close that out. When you're, when you're done here with your InDesign file, just go up and uh, close this out. And when it prompts you, just don't save it. That way, when you come back to your banner template the next time, you basically start with a clean slate. So if this is the case, and let's say you only just had one design, you want to put it in here. So we go up to uh, place this design, and let's just say it's one, uh, this one right here. This is the only one we want to place in here. We just hit open, and then we just place it in there. Whoops, make sure you're on the correct layer, though. Make sure you're on the banner layer. Come on now. Let me make sure we're on. Close those other two. There we go. Make sure we're on that layer and then now place it in there and export that after you change the um, page from hidden to show. So that's how you can automate the whole process. Obviously I did it with uh, seven designs. If you had 50 designs, you could do it. Obviously banners are big files, so you may have to have a, a computer that has some good processing power, but that's how you can automate the whole process from start to finish. I know it took a little while. This video is running, you know, 18 minutes now. Um, but since this is all set up, you only have to do this one time. The only time you ever have to make changes to this file is when you add an additional size. Let's say uh, instead of a 3 by 10 you're doing a 2 by 10 or whatever. You would have to go in and create a new alternate layout. And you make sure that you're saving over your original template file instead. But every time you have the banner, you place your banner design in here, just make sure when you close, you just hit don't save. And that way, when you go back to your find, your uh, original file here, it always imports or opens up as a basically as an empty file. So I hope that helps somebody, especially those folks who do a lot of wide format printing and do a lot of banners. This should automate your uh, workflow a little bit better. And like I said, once you do it once, you have it all set and then you're ready to just drop files in and, and boom, 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 go from there. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment below. Again, the link to the previous video is going to be left in the description. So if you're confused on the stroke styles or a couple of the other things, I covered that in the previous video. As always, please give a like, share, and subscribe if you haven't. If you have more questions, please uh, follow the link to my Patreon page. I have a little chat there that you can uh, go ahead and place questions in there and I'll respond. Uh, but I, again, I hope this helps somebody out. Thanks again for watching, folks. And until the next one, take care.